Hey, everybody. I don't know if I'm live or not. Uh. Oh, I am live. Hey, <laughs> I'm up here like, where's the chat? <laughs> ah, the rent. He ain't at my house. He ain't at my house. I don't think, I don't think Sean Bradley has ever been anywhere near Nebraska. <laughs> What's going on, y'all? I just set this uh this um stream yard up. And while I was setting the stream yard up, I happened to see people doing lives talking about where is Sean? What's going on with Sean's channel? Did he take his channel down? Was it taken down? I mean, what's tea, y'all? Because I literally been at work and don't know what's going on. I know a lot of drama is going through these YouTube streets right now, and I'm trying to stay all the way out of it. <laughs> I'm just saying. What's up, Larry? How you doing? How are you doing? And this stream yard... Okay, I thought I had already had StreamYard, but I guess I had it, but I didn't upgrade it or whatnot. But when I was checking one of my older videos where I was testing out StreamYard, um, it didn't have the big old StreamYard logo at the top, like up here somewhere was where the uh, logo was. So when I had came in to do the... the uh, live tonight i was like why is that big old stream yard name up there in the corner it didn't used to be like that then i realized we have to upgrade now and pay a fee <laughs> we have to pay a fee a monthly fee or an annual fee in order for the logo not to appear on the stream yard the stream yard logo to not appear on the stream yard so i was like when did they do that because it wasn't like that before but i guess since a lot of people can't use um google hangouts anymore they you know they gotta get their coins i guess but do y'all think this is connected with google or do you think it's something totally different because google stopped their uh google hangout which was free, by the way. And now we have to, in, unless we want the stream yard with the stream yard all over the, you know, the screen stream yard here, the little ducky there or whatever. That, is that a duck? <laughs> is that a duck? Is that a goose? <laughs> I don't know what that thing is on stream yard, that little symbol. But <laughs> Anyway, for those who don't know who've been thinking about StreamYard or getting it, it's $25 a month unless you pay the annual fee. If you pay it annually, you save $5 each month. But anyway, anyway, yes, as I was saying, I'm like, I don't know if I need to hit Tricia. I don't know if I need to hit Deanna up. I'm like, where is Sean Bradley and what's going on with Sean Bradley and them talking about his channel missing? And so I was like, well, let me check it out. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it again. <clears throat> I'm looking for Sean's channel and I don't see it. I don't see his channel. Now, is it possible he could have just private it? Like, is that what, uh, what's, what's his name? Um, Armand Wiggins. Remember when he had privated his account and he privated his live and everybody thought that, um, somebody had shut down his YouTube channel and he was up to how many people did he have? I think he had like 30,000 or 30,000 or more, something like that uh subscribers and his channel had just went away after some incident he had with uh ts madison i believe and somebody else anyway come to find out later on that evening his channel really wasn't taken down by somebody else it wasn't striked or anything like that he would just hit it so hmm that's why i titled this uh where is sean bradley uh do anybody know what's going on because um 
<laughs> I do subscribe to him. And I do like Sean Bradley. I know a lot of people, you know, they have their likes, they have their dislikes. There are people that I like that you don't like and vice versa. And I have no issues with nobody if they don't like who I like. And that's how I like to keep it, vice versa. So anywho, <laughs> anywho, um, I know the other day I had heard Five Babe say something about uh government clearance and they were talking about government clearance tonight on her channel i'm like i don't know uh about no government clearance i don't know all the laws that has to do with you know social media i mean i know like the basics sorry my lips are dry <laughs> there is that what it is the ranch because, yeah, I was just saying that I heard something about government clearance. Do you think they're investigating his social media? I know I saw on um, Firebase channel the other day, she was saying something about people, if somebody was to report his channel or report his content to, like, the government, um since he has government clearance that he could possibly get in trouble. And I'm like, would somebody go that route? Would somebody go that route and try to get his channel taken down? Hmm. What y'all think? What do y'all think? But I mean like this. Okay. So let's just say that happened. I'm just saying, hypothetically speaking, Let's just say it happens and they take his channel down. Can he just get another one like everybody else? Like everybody else. I mean, me personally, I got like one, two, three, four. I got like four channels. <laughs> I mean, they're all for different things. Like one of them is a collaboration channel with my sis. One of them is my cake decorating channel. One of them is my main channel. And you know what I'm saying? So... Can he just make another channel? I mean, yeah, he would lose like all his videos, you know, and start all over. But he has a nice following. And I'm sure that if he had to start all over, like a lot of people like VS, she started over how many times? Like three, four, five, eleven, you know, and she she has a nice following too. And it takes her like no time to build up to a thousand. Um, get those clicks and views, get those hours in, get monetized. So, I mean, I hope nothing like that happened. And maybe he's just on a hiatus right now. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. He said, Susie shared that the new Homeland Security Chief sent out a memo. That's who it was. That's thank you, Wrench. I don't know why I said five, babe. Excuse me. I don't know why I said five. I meant VS. I, I've been watching so many videos over the last three, four days. Like, it's so much stuff going on here. I can't keep up. But thank you, Wrench. Thanks for correcting me. It was VS. I knew it was somebody. I knew it was a female who was um talking about the clearance. But then Five Babe, she was talking about the clearance as well. Um, Because I watched VS. I watched... Five Babe, I watched Sean, I watched Tracy, um, I watched probably people y'all don't even like. <laughs> I watched Ask April. I watch. I mean, I watch a lot of people. I watch um James, um QB. Uh, I watch a lot of people. So anyway, and a lot of stuff has been going on in these streets lately. So I got, I got, I might have got it a little confused, but I do know that they were um saying stuff like he could get in trouble for content that he's putting on his channel as far as um, with the government clearance and stuff. And I hope that's not true. I really hope that's not true. Um, but then again, then again, you say it isn't about his channel. It's about his job. Um, the new Homeland Security sent out a memo about social media. Kind of, yep, I saw that. I saw that. And you said if their behavior doesn't represent Homeland Security, then they could lose their job. It isn't about his channel. So, so still, Wrench, so still. Okay, let's say, hypothetically speaking, 
somebody did, you know, report him or whatever, and they did an investigation, hypothetically speaking, he can still just get a new channel. Or, I mean, see, if somebody's hating on him and purposely trying to get his taken his channel taken down or purposely trying to get him to lose his job. I want to see that part. I didn't think about that part. That part. I didn't think about like, of course, your job, social media, your job, social media, your bills, social media, your car payment, social media. You know, it's like it's a lot of people on here who has jobs. Um, I never worked for the government and I didn't work at jobs where they say, if you are acting in such a way, you know, that they don't find acceptable on social media, then you could be disciplined. So it's not just government jobs that are like that. It's a lot of jobs that are like that, especially the bigger jobs, the fortune 400s and, you know, things like that. Um, I just hope, I just hope not. I mean, I just hope not. And it's like everybody on here, everybody on here um, has certain content that they do on their channel, on their platforms. Um, some of it, some people think is horrible. Some people don't agree with what a lot of people do or on their channel or whatnot. And some people is quick to flag, 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 flag. I don't know how many times I didn't heard the word flag in the last week. Like every video I'm watching, they flagging, they flagging, they flagging. And I'm watching videos like, what is they flagging for? Like, I didn't hear anything that anybody said that, you know, <laughs> what made somebody want to flag something? You said she gave the number to call. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. And that's why I was thinking, I wonder if somebody really called. Or maybe he's just tooken, tooken. Maybe he <laughs> he took us. Maybe he took us his uh YouTube channel off the radar. I mean, what would you do in a situation like that? If people were threatening to call your job, to call your um organization the government and report on you for certain content that you are doing on YouTube or any other platform. Hey, Miss Nashley Nolans, how you doing, sweets? But I mean, what would you do? <clears throat> Turn your channel off, delete your channel, hide your channel, totally delete it and do another channel. I think that's what I would do. I think that's what I would do. I would totally, if I really, really thought that I could get in trouble with my job over something I had put on social media, I think I would totally delete my channel um, and start another one. But then we always have people who wants to record videos and keep them saved on their computers to use for later. Mm. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I'm, hey, we saw what happened with Armand Green. I mean, Ar did I say Armand Green? <laughs> Thanks, son. I don't want no cookies. Thank you. Could you bring me a cup? But anyway, that's my man child. My man child. The oldest son. But, um... Anywho, you said uh, it matters about his behavior. Yeah, I hear what you're saying, Ranch. I totally hear what you're saying. I just hope that he, I, I just hope he didn't get in trouble. Like I said, I know we all don't like the same people on here, you know, and one thing I do not do and one thing I've never have done was come at somebody for somebody that they were um, supporting, if I didn't support them, thank you. One thing I never done is come at somebody who uh about somebody they're supporting. I just don't. And I follow whoever I want to follow. 
And unless somebody just blocks me out they chat or something, I'll be in people chat. I'll be all over the place. I ain't never had an issue with it before. You know, I'll be here, I'll be there. And I watch all types of people's content. You said, well, this is a very sad, however, if you read your HR policy, they are updated to the social media. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I know, and I know it has, you know, with, with I guess, like I said, I don't know any know much about government jobs. I've never had a government job, but I totally understand, you know, about the government clearance thing and losing your job. But one thing I would hope is that if somebody... Sorry, I'm opening this pop, y'all. And it's about to explode all over me. My son must have shook the bag. Um, but um, I would just hope he wouldn't lose his job. I wouldn't wish that on nobody. I would not wish that on nobody. I wouldn't even wish that on people I don't like. I'm just not that kind of person. Like, I'm just not that kind of person. People out here work, it's already hard enough to survive out here, paying bills, mortgages, car payments, you know, if you got little kids, daycare, uh, food, insurance, you know, the normal stuff. And to actually go so far as to try to make somebody lose their job, I just couldn't do it. You said that you said Jaxie, that's too much. Hey Jaxie, how you doing? Hey, storyteller with the music. All right, what's the, what's up, storyteller with the music? Um, East with Fee, you said you don't bother with the drama behind the but beyond the girl. <laughs> Trust me, there are times when I be up here and I be in people chats and they be I'll be like, What the what in the heezy? I'll be scared to say something like they be going off on everybody in the chat. I'm like, um, I'm in the bushes, like <laughs> so I know what you saying. You said I'll be all over too, but I done been blocked from people live streaming, don't know why. Laugh a lot. I hope Sean okay though. I heard he hit his channel. I I I'm that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that he just hit his channel and maybe. You know, because you know he has uh, another one. I don't think he really uses it. I don't think he has anything on that other channel. Um, I think I'm actually subscribed to that other channel. I didn't even think about checking. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. I'm on the other one. I'm on the other one and it's not really any it's not really any content over there, not much. A few videos. Yeah, it looks like interviews, reviews. Um Yeah, it looks like reviews over there. Yeah, it looks like a few reviews over there. That's pretty much. So maybe he'll start using the other channel. Matter of fact, I thought I was subscribed. Let me hit subscribe right now. Because you know what? Honestly speaking, let's see, send all notifications for this channel. Honestly speaking, when I first saw his other, the other name, King Sean Bradley in chats, honestly, I thought that was a troll. On everything. I thought that was a troll. And so I would notice it was like comment on certain certain uh people's lives. And then I heard somebody one day say, Is this really Sean? Is this really Sean? Then I heard somebody say, like uh in a, on another day or something, they was like, Yeah, that's Sean Bradley, that's his other channel. So then I was like, Okay, so that's not a troll, that's really Sean. And then I was like, Okay, that that's him, that's him, because I was on his Patreon one day. Um, like, let's see, when was that? I was on his Patreon like four days ago, maybe five was it Friday? Yeah, Friday, he was on Patreon, and he was commenting under that name, that other YouTube name. I said, yeah, 
He's not a troll. It's not a troll. You said storyteller with the music. You thought it was a troll too. I did too. I mean, I really did too. And it really was confirmed for me when we was on Patreon and he was commenting under that name on that other channel. So I was like, oh, okay, so that is Sean's other channel. But I figured he was just, you know, how some people, they just have a backup. Some people just have a backup channel like QB. He just had a party. Um, When was that? Uh, Was it yesterday? He had a party yesterday, I think, because his other channel reached 1,000 subscribers. So he had a channel um, party, a, one, a 1K party or whatnot over there last night. Um, a lot of people have backup channels, mainly because people is always out here flagging and trying to strike people's channels down that they don't like. Messing with people coins. So, you know, it is what it is, though. You said Jay story must it's most likely hit. That's what I believe, Jexy. That's what I believe. Um, uh, I just mentioned I hope that nobody attempted to get him in trouble. I really do. I really do. I like Sean. I know some people don't. You know, some people like me, some people don't. Some people like the rich. Some people don't. I don't know if the wrench is still in here. I'm cool with the wrench. <laughs> I'm cool with the wrench. I'm cool with a lot of people. Um, I don't know why that is. Probably because I'm pretty well-rounded, I want to say, maybe. I don't know if that's the right word to use. But sometimes I watch people just for a key key. Sometimes I watch people because they have good messages. Sometimes I watch people because they know what's going on all over these streets. Sometimes I watch people because I really support them. So it's like we have a lot of different reasons why we watch some people. Sometimes we watch people that we really don't care for just because we need to know and I'll say need loosely because some people feel like they don't need to know nothing that's going on. But then when something happened, they'd be like, what had happened? Like QB, what had happened? <laughs> and by the way, I've been saying that, that saying for about a good 10, 15 years, what had happened? <laughs> I think I got that from Martin Lawrence. I think it was Martin Lawrence, wasn't it? Back in the 90s. But anyway, anyway, I hope that he is all, he is well. Um, I am supposed to be at Club uh, Chats event next year uh, for Vegas Gate 2020. I am going to be the, uh, the not the, I was about to say the chef. I'm going to be the cake lady. <laughs> That's what I am. That's what they call me here where I live. But um, the cake lady, I'm going to make some cakes for the event. Um, those of you who do not know, I am a personal custom cake decorator. You can check out my other YouTube channel, Tanya's Delight Slice by Slice, or my Facebook page, Tanya's Delights Slice by Slice. I am a personal custom cake decorator. Um... So, yeah, he asked me a little while back, could I come down there and, you know, make some cakes for one day of their event? So I was like, cool. I always wanted to go to Vegas. You know, here's an honest uh, opportunity that I didn't expect. It was just like all out the blue. One day I, <laughs> I was on live and he was like, I need to holler at you. I need to holler at you. And I'm like, oh, snap. What did I do? What did I do? I I, I, I don't be getting into it with nobody on this YouTube. <laughs> I get on here. I do my reviews, my green leaves, my blackies, my b-ball wise, my power, my empire. I do my reviews. And then I, <laughs> my life resumes elsewhere. But yeah, that's what he wanted. <laughs> it was so funny. I was like, what? What he mean? He need me to call what? But anyway, and then on top of that, I don't give my number out to nobody on YouTube. It's like two people. Let me see. One, two. Yeah, it's like two people on here that got my phone number, my real phone number, not the call-in line number, but my real number. So, you know, I gave it out. 
he hit me up. We discussed it. I'm going to make some cakes for Club um, Chats uh, Vegas 2020. Vegas cake next year. But anywho, anywho, you say, Carter Z, you want to go to Vegas? Come on through. Come on. <laughs> Come on through. Shoot. Hey, Marsh Bar, how you doing? Hey, I live in the Midwest. I live in the Midwest. I live in Omaha, Nebraska, land of the Cornhuskers. And, and don't talk stuff. We got our butt smashed. Smashed. We got we got spanked. Spanked all the way home. They got spanked all the way back to their dorms last, last week. <laughs> it was awful. It was butt awful. They got they got that bus spanked. But anyway, better luck next week, guys, next game. But anyway, um, so I try to get as far away from here as I can every year because it's, I mean, it's the Midwest. It's a nice place to live. It's a nice place to raise your family and all that. But we don't have a lot of, you know, stuff like Vegas and Florida and Cali. And, you know, it's the Midwest. You know what I'm saying? It's stuff to do here. But you know, any opportunity we get here in the Midwest to travel, go to a resort, you know, something like that, just to get away from, especially in the cold, the cold, the winters here are horrible. So, yeah, he's here. Yeah. <laughs> That's my boo. That's my dog. <laughs> That's my dog. <laughs> Man, I was gonna stalk you down. <laughs> I put out a I said I'm gonna put out a uh put out a word on the street. Where's Sean Bradley? <laughs> hey my guard, you said you good. Okay, Sean, you okay? Everything cool? Everything cool? I was gonna hit you in the DMs too. I sure was. <clears throat> but yeah, we was just talking about Vegas Gate and me trying to get out of Nebraska and go to Vegas Bait and kick it and bake cakes and all that kind of stuff. And Sean Bradley just popped up in the chat. And I just subscribed to your other channel, by the way, because I was thinking, if it's really true that his channel is gone, let me subscribe to the other channel so I can get the notifications just in case he go live over there. <laughs> because people been on you they been talking about you all evening about your channel where he at where he been who he with no nah. <laughs> hey Cynthia Jones yes yes it's so good to see you because I I ain't gonna lie I know I ain't the only one who was out here concerned I know I'm not the only one who was out here concerned and hoping that everything was okay. So I'm glad it's good to see you in the chat. It's good to see you in the chat. But um, that ain't even why I initially wanted to come on live today. You know, like earlier this morning when I had did the live after uh, Amber was Amber Geiger was found guilty. I had went live for a lunchtime live. It was about an hour long. And I said I was going to come tonight on, I was going to pay to get this little stream yard, which was $25. Um, I was going to pay to get this little stream yard so that we could discuss Amber Geiger and the guilty and, you know, possible sentencing and all that. And when I was setting up the stream yard, I saw... Where is Sean? Where's his channel? Is his channel gone? You know, and everybody talking about, you know, the channel. Is he hiding it? Is he taking away? They was like, okay, we know what Armand Wiggins did a few months ago. Maybe same thing happened, you know. Hey. <laughs> All right. Okay, you was on Patreon tonight? Okay, I'm going to have to go over there. I'll go over there, Sean. Because I was on your Patreon. When was that? Friday? And I was, I don't know how long you've been in this live, but I had mentioned to other people and some other people mentioned too, that when we had first saw the Kang, Sean Bradley, in lives, we thought it was a troll. We didn't know that was you. And I said, it was really confirmed to me that that was you when I was in your um, Patreon last weekend 
or last Friday, I think it was, when I saw you commenting under there, I was like, oh, yeah, that is Sean. That's Sean. That's him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so Sean, I will be checking out your Patreon. I got you on that. But um, you said you've been glued to the trial. Cynthia, man, I've been glued to the trial too. But I couldn't watch too much after like two o'clock today because I had to go to the nursing home and it was so busy there. I didn't have really time to do anything. It was like really busy at the nursing home tonight. So I didn't have no time to watch the rest of the uh the rest of the trial today. And, you know, listen to anything. I watched a little bit of it up to the part where they were talking about their, um, they, when it was turning in the paperwork to the judge talking about her social media accounts and her, uh, her Pinterest and talking about how she was using drugs and how she had lied on her application. And, you know, they was talking about all kind of stuff. And so, I was like, well, let's talk about that tonight. And I was going to have people come on the panel and everything. And then, like I said, I saw Sean Bradley and all these different lies, these titles. So I was like, hmm, let me question this. Where is Sean Bradley? And I probably would have known about the Patreon. But like I said, I went from work to live to work to back home again y'all know i got like three four five eleven jobs like them jamaicans but um you said a sentence hearing yeah did you watch that cynthia yes i'm glad justice was served i am so glad justice was served you said you saw that last year much bar you saw what last year hey the startup ceo lifestyle tv what's going on I'm trying to figure out what much bar. What did you see last year? You talking about you saw or you thought that it was going to be a guilty plea when you heard of it last year or. Oh, Carter, you said what's Patreon. Okay. Patreon is kind of like YouTube. The platform is kind of the same. You use, you actually use YouTube to go live on Patreon. So you sign up for Patreon and people can sign up or subscribe to your channel on Patreon or your page or whatever it's called. And, but it's like, it's, you have tiers. So like, um, YouTube, I'm trying not to confuse you or anything. YouTube has where, um, you have a platform. People can come watch you. They can, um, they can super, super, uh, super chat. I mean, what do you call it? <laughs> Cash app you. They can PayPal you. You can get paid through commercials and ads and all that kind of stuff. And then people can super chat you um, on Patreon. And then also on YouTube, you, you have limits. You have limits like what you can say, what you can do, what you can post. You know, you can get strikes and all this kind of stuff if you don't adhere by all their, you know, whatever, whatever. On Patreon is more broad. You could just, um, if you're going to have like a grown channel, you can make it uh, a grown platform so younger people can't even come across it. Basically, you can't even get to the Patreon. You can't get to it without a link. So like if I was to go live on Patreon tonight, I would have to send you a link and you can log in to my Patreon. So it's not like public unless you make it public. But anywho, the people who subscribe to you, you have like tiers. And one of the tiers could be like a free tier if you want. One of the tiers could be like a two or three or four or five dollar tier if you want. I mean, the tiers can increase and increase. Some people, some people, like people with humongous platforms, I mean humongous platforms, they have tiers that are like $200 a month. Some people got tiers that are like $100 a month. $50 a month, $20 a month, all the way down to like free or like $1.99 per month. So, and it's a monthly fee. The people subscribe to your channel. It gets automatically taken from their debit card on the first of the month. So, you know, and you have more freedom over there. You have more freedom. Um, you don't have to worry about, you know, people striking your channel down. If you say it is, you can post whatever you want over there. You know, 
So I had actually created one, but I never, I've never used it yet. I've never used it yet because I'm like, hmm, what could I do over there on my Patreon if I really wanted to use it? You know, and it's kind of like just additional support as well from the people who really support you. It's kind of like them showing additional support by supporting your Patreon as well, you know, because we really don't get paid a lot on YouTube unless you got like a gazillion you know, subscribers and stuff like that. But yeah, check that out. Check that out. It's it's really good because it's like, like again, some people, they can go live on YouTube, but you can't speak about certain things, you know? And if you private your lives on YouTube, you they can't be monetized with commercials. You know what I mean? So if you're over there on Patreon, you can talk about whatever the heck you want. And the fee from each subscriber will be paid monthly. So you don't have to worry about how much you're going to get. Now, of course, people might like, you know, one month they might just like any other bill. They might be like, oh, I can't pay that thing right now. You know, <laughs> I hit them up next month. So, you know, the money isn't always guaranteed, but, you know, it's. It's good. It's cool. I like Patreon. I'm only subscribed to a few people, though. Only a few people. So, yeah. <clears throat> but you said it's all, Cynthia said it's almost like a private chat with tears. Maybe one. Yep. 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 Exactly. Exactly. But from what I hear, though, from what I hear, though, now I would never do this. Me personally would never do it. But there are people, from what I hear, who actually subscribe to people, you know, channels over there uh, on Patreon just to take information back to other people and, you know, stuff like that. Not that they really support the person. They just on their platform to get what they need and take it back to someone else or use it, you know, on their own platform on YouTube. So everybody, just because you got a Patreon does not mean everybody on there is for you that's the thing about it so you gotta be careful who you allow on there make sure you really know the people that are trying to get um trying to be a subscriber on your channel because some people is all about the money all about the coins they don't care subscribe pay pay me every month i don't care if you like me or not you know and then some people is like well i only want my real supporters over there on patreon so you know but you know, to each his own. <clears throat> but you said what you say is still a way. Yes, it's still a way to monetize. Yep, it's still a way to monetize. And like I said, you you got more freedom over there to speak and engage with your supporters, your family. You know, <clears throat> my spot. Yes, I'm so happy about the verdict. I was in tears. Doing... Man, did y'all see? Did y'all see in the courtroom? When they said guilty, when they said guilty, I'm like, I think that's the first time Amber cried for real during this whole entire thing. Like, she was shook of. She was finally shook of. I'm like, all the times when I was watching the trial day by day, and I'm like, this lady looks like she's not even there. She looks like she's a thousand miles away from everybody else in the courtroom. Like she's in her own little world. The way she talked, sound like she drugged up on something. And I'm like, what is really going on with this Amber chick? She doesn't show any compassion. I mean, any feelings. There was like no connection there, a, a lack, a total lack of connection with this Amber lady. And then when they said guilty, she was up there. All you saw was her shoulders. They showed the back of her head. All you saw was the back of her head and her shoulders going like this. She was doing that bang head, sniffing, bang head, crying, grabbing tissue and all that. I'm like, oh, now she wants to cry. <laughs> now she wants to show some emotion. <laughs> it's too late for that. 
it's too it's much too late for that so now they're working on the sentencing phase um <clears throat> to make to try to get her as much time as possible and that's what they started today i watched a few hours of it when they were talking about the drugs and talking about her social media how she has a lack of compassion um uh, for black people and they they trying to prove that that's what they're trying to prove. And we were talking about that earlier this afternoon, like how she tried for the police department several times. She tried to get a job as an officer at the airport. She, I mean, <laughs> these jobs that she kept trying to get that involved her carrying weapons and stuff. And then the stuff that they reported that she was saying about, uh, y'all saw what she had said about the MLK parade and how she said she had, she text, these were text messages that she was sending to her comrades talking about, I hate everybody except for y'all. I hate everybody out here except for y'all. What kind of mess is that from a police officer of the law? Hmm. A police officer of the law who is supposed to protect and serve. They hate everybody but who? Hmm. Mm. Well, we shall see. I hope they give her a lot of time. She can get five to ninety-nine. Five to ninety-nine. That's a large gap, y'all. That's a large gap. That's a large gap. And some people are saying that they'll probably give her a slap on the wrist. Um, five years minimum sentence out in two or three years. I'm really hoping that they set an example because that's what we need we as a people we as humans that's what we need we as citizens no matter what color we are they need to set an example of this lady i'm sorry i'm sorry too many of them been getting off year after year after year after year getting off for murder unneeded, undeserved murder and getting off, getting their jobs back. They still got their pensions. They still got their 401ks. They still got their vacation. They still have their loved ones to come home to every day. So I'm hoping that they make an example out of her. I'm not saying give it a whole 99.99999 but <laughs> she definitely needs to get way more than the minimum, which is five years. I say like maybe 35, 40, 50. How old was the young man? How about three times his age? How about we give her that? You know? So, yeah, there's still a lot of Ambers walking around. Mm -hmm. Getting away with garbage that uh, they have done to our people. Mm -hmm. You right. You right. You said they made Bill. You said they better not. They made Bill Cosby an example. Thank you, thank you. They showed sure it made Bill an example. They surely did. They surely did. And you know what? I think they're gonna make it another example out of Kells. I cannot wait to find out what the heck they're gonna do about him. As far as like his sentencing, this gonna be the trial of the century. <laughs> his trial is going to be the trial of the century. And I'm going to be all in it. We're going to be up on here every day. I might stop doing reviews on TV shows for that mess because we're going to be up in here every day talking about Kells. Sure. <laughs> With his age and a number, age ain't nothing but a number saying, mm, mm. you said exactly three times his age. Mm -hmm. Yep, three times his age. That'll be perfect. That'll be perfect. Now, you said Boston was completely innocent and awesome young. Right. And, and that's what I was saying about my sons. I have two sons, no daughters. I have nieces, though, you know, little cousins, friends, little girls, you know, <clears throat> that I'm I'm close to. But I have no girls of my own. I just have boys. And the the sad thing about it is. You not only have to train your children to go out in this world and get a career, get a degree, get an education, 
um, how to be stand-up citizens, contribute back to your community. I mean, you don't only have to teach them the normal basic stuff that you're supposed to teach your kid, respect, you know, hard work, you know, stuff like that. But then you got to teach them how to interact with police, even when they've done absolutely nothing wrong. Absolutely nothing wrong. You got to teach them. Don't look at them in the eye too hard. Don't, don't look at them like you want to do something. Don't look at them like you tough. Don't talk to them smart. Don't, don't raise your voice, not even a minute of a syllable. Don't, you know, I mean... <laughs> Like, oh my God, it was one time when, um, one time my oldest son, he had got pulled over because he's, he claims he allegedly ran a yellow light. He was like, mom, it was yellow. Like, I was, but they said it was red, <laughs> but he claims it was yellow. Um, anyway, he got pulled over and that was like his first time ever getting pulled over. He was probably like, I don't know, 19, because he's 22 now. And he only started driving, like really driving at 18 before he went off to college. So he didn't have a whole lot of experience. So one day um, he had called home and he was like, mom, I got pulled over. And I just immediately started pa panicking. I was like, what you mean you got pulled over? What had happened? What what's what's wrong? Where you at? Do I need to come out there? I'm I'm working. I'm grabbing my keys, grab my shoes. Like where you at? Because it's sad that your mind immediately goes all the way left and thinks the worst when your children have an interaction with the popos. Um, I started panicking and my heart started racing, and it's like, okay, calm down, T. Calm down, Tanya. Listen to your child. And I was like, okay, what's going on? He said, well, they said such and such and such and such. And I'm like, well, why didn't you call me? I didn't told you many times if something happened. And he said, but mom, you also told me not to reach for anything. He said, I wanted to call you. <laughs> he said, I wanted to call you so I could have you on speakerphone so you can hear everything just in case something went down. But he was scared to reach for his phone. And I said, dang, at least I didn't fail in that department because while I was wanting him to call me and tell me what was going on, he remembered what I said about don't reach for something. And when you do, make sure you tell them, I'm reaching, I'm getting my wallet, look at my fingers, I'm not pulling any weapons, you know. So he remembered that. He remembered that. And I was like, I had to like myself like, oh yeah, don't tell your sons to reach for the phone. What's wrong with you? But it was like in panic mode. I was like, was everything okay? He was like, yeah, he gave me a ticket. And man, so... I can imagine. I'm like, I've always been really overprotective with my sons. And so these people who lose their sons and daughters to the hand of police officers um, for no doggone reason at all, and then get off and they still be walking around free as a bird, it hurts every time. Even when you're not related to those people, it hurts every time because all you can think about is, what if it was mine? What if it was my nephew, my cousin, my brother, my uncle, my grandpa, my, you know, my dad? Like, you you don't, you know, you don't never know which cop you're going to meet on which day. You might meet the good cop. You might meet the cop that had an argument with their um mate that morning. You might meet a cop who just got totally disrespected by somebody you know, who might look like you and they got an issue with that person. They still got that running through their head. So they figure it ain't going down the same way this time with the next person that might look like you. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but so you, you never know which cop you're going to meet on which day. And that's why, like I was telling my um people who was watching me, was it last night? <clears throat> Was it last night? We was talking about kids last night. 
like young adults last night. We was talking about them and how we have to instill certain things into their brain before they even get close to like the graduation age in grade school and junior high. And and sometimes, you know, in the end, it still might not work. We teach them to do everything they're supposed to, respect authority, how to act when you get around a cop, you know, don't be fidgety, don't be quick to move, don't be respectful, you know, damn near got to say, yes, sir, no, sir, whatever you say, sir, you know, you you, you darn near got to teach your kids to do that. But then when you have boys, it's kind of hard to do that because I have these type of sons who are raised to be strong men. They fathers are strong. All the guys in our family and women are strong. So it's like, okay, you telling me to kind of like dumb myself down when I'm around an officer or downplay my intelligence or, you know, stuff like that. And some kids don't want to hear that. And that's why a lot of our youth do get in trouble. Because they be like, you man, you ain't gonna talk to me like that. You ain't my daddy. I don't you better respect me. I don't know who you is. Da, 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 da. And it's like <laughs> I'm like, it's like, okay, sometimes you can't win for losing, you know, with these but like again, you sometimes you just don't know which cop you're gonna get on which day. Cynthia jump, right, exactly. Remain silent. Remain silent, but again, depends on what kind of guy, what kind of cop you're dealing with on what day. You know, it, it it's don't matter. But yeah, Amber, she deserves what's coming for her, and I pray that it's a decent amount of time. Like I said, um, I'm not petitioning for the family or nothing like that, like throw away the key. I just hope that she gets a decent amount of time and they finally make an example out of this because it's going to hit home really big for other officers. They like this lady, this little old lady is about to go to prison. She's an officer and how much you want to bet? She probably thought she was getting off. How much you want to bet? Because that's all that's what happens every single time, darn near. They get off. They get off. And it'd be the opposite of what we saw today. It'd be them over there screaming and shouting and all this kind of stuff. And then it'd be the the people, the family member that was killed out in the hallway crying and consoling each other. So for once, well, not for once, because we've had some wins, a few here and there. But we get a win, and it's amazing. It's amazing. And my heart goes out to that family. You know, you, you always have to imagine, not imagine, but just be like, dang, that could be, you know, that. And that's another reason why every single time you leave your family members. My sons do this all the time. Y'all probably didn't hear him when he walked out the door <laughs> to run down the street before they closed to the corner store. He's like, Mom, I'm going to get some pop. I'm going to get some snacks. Do y'all want something? And he was like, I was just about to um start talking to you guys. I had just started my life. And all I heard was, love you, bye. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> the live had just started. And I'm like, Lo it was in the process of starting. I was like, love you, bye. But every single time we um, leave each other, I don't care if it's to run to the store down the street, to run to the post office to drop off a letter, to go to work, if they're going over their girlfriend's house, if I'm going over my friend's house, wherever. We never leave each other without saying those three words. <laughs> I love you. And my sons, when they were younger, they used to be like, dang, mom, you tell us that like all day long. You tell us you love us like all day long. And I still do it. Like in the morning, they can leave 10 times in one day in each time love you son bye see you later love you mom bye like it we it's on repeat mode because you never know you just never know when it might be the last time that you speak to somebody you really care about so <clears throat> i just want to mention that 
Life is too short. Take advantage of every day, every day, every hour, every moment, everybody that you care for. You said she did scrub her phone and all. Mm. Oh, hold up. Let me, I missed some comments. You said she did scrub her phone and all. Okay. Do I need to go back? Oh, yeah. You said he would have been 27 to 28 on September 29th. So that was his birthday? Like a few days ago? Wow. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. You got two sons, 42 and 22. Oh, that's a wide gap right there. So, well, girl, what was you thinking? You, girl, you said 42 and 22. Ooh, child. You know, I was just talking to a friend, a friend that I went to high school with. We had seen each other at Walmart. And she had this little bitty baby in her car. And I was like, ooh, is this your niece? Is this your grandbaby? This your... She said, girl, no. She said, I done bumped my head and had a baby. <laughs> she was like, I done bumped my head and a baby popped out. But <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Yo, the, the little boy looked like he was probably one. I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, how old is your other kids? Ain't they grown? She's like, yes. She said, I don't know what had happened. I'm like, what had happened was. <laughs> but that's that's cool though. That's cool though. But yeah, I know a few people who their kids is like <laughs> years apart, years apart. Mine is four, almost exactly four years apart. Almost. And it wasn't purposely done. It just just happened that way. I didn't plan neither one. God planned them. Like we say, we don't plan our kids. Some people, some people plan their kids. Okay, honey, we're going to um go to college and we're going to get married and we're going to buy a car and a dog, and put a fence around the yard. Uh, we're going to get some 4K. We're going to save up like $10,000, 30000 in the bank. And then we're going to have a baby in 2013. And then seven years and 52 days later, we're going to have another baby. You know, some people like really schedule stuff like that. And then we have others. <laughs> God just be like, I'll be like, God playing that. I ain't going to tell my kids they wasn't wanting or nothing like that. I didn't plan you. It just God planned that. You are here from God as a gift to me. And he sent you here when he knew that I needed to have you here. And especially with that oldest one, he sent that oldest one to me right on time because I didn't say it to y'all before. I'm from the streets. I'm from the streets. And that was the only thing that stopped me from being in the streets. And I come from a screech family. And I, I know people on here on YouTube talk about their family and all this kind of woo woo do do. <laughs> I came from a street family full of gang members, drug dealers, a couple of murderers, a couple of this, a couple of that, a couple of crackheads, a couple of alcoholics. I mean, we. Like some families, you just have it all. You just have it like you have a, like they say in cities and communities, like a melting pot. In some families, you have a melting pot of all type of people, all type of behaviors. Um, and But when it's family, it's like we don't ask for... <laughs> We don't get to choose who we're born to. We don't get to choose who our family is. We just try to make it work the best way that we can. And I'm just thankful that I had my son when I had my son because he slowed me down. He put some brakes on it. God was like, I got you. <laughs> he put some brakes on it, like the emergency brakes and everything. So I am very grateful for my two sons that I have. And I wouldn't change them for a world. I wouldn't trade them for anything in the world. Nothing in the world. 
But um, <clears throat> you guys, <laughs> it's getting late on here. I know I came on here to talk about one thing. Then we ended up talking about something else. Then we got back to what I came on here to talk about. Then we started talking about something else. But I'm glad you guys... <laughs> I'm glad you guys were here tonight to talk to me. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't hit on a diff, lot of different topics tonight. Hey, the Phil Muffy, thank you for hitting that like button. I really appreciate you guys for hitting the like button and joining me on this live tonight. Uh, we were supposed to talk about Amber Geiger trial, and then we opened it up with Sean. We were looking for Sean like this. We were looking for Sean like this, like, Sean Bradley, where you at? Where you at, homie? And then we got back around to Amber Geiger. So, anywho, anywho, um, you guys, I will be live tomorrow night. Um, we're going to be discussing Greenleaf tomorrow night. Um, it is Wednesday, so there are some other TV shows on tomorrow night that I know a lot of people watch. So, I probably won't go live till about 9.30-ish, 10 o'clock. Because I don't want to interrupt anybody else's TV show time. But anyway, yeah. So if you guys are not caught up with Greenleaf, the last episode came on tonight. Yeah, it came on tonight. <laughs> so I'll be doing a review over that tomorrow night. So if you are not already subscribed to my channel, and if you have not already hit that notification bell, please make sure you hit that bell. Please like the video, share the video, subscribe, hit the bell. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And you guys, as usual, Primetime Squad, stay safe, be blessed, and I'm out. Deuces.